Hi hey folks, welcome back. What is this, Frick? Episode 12. Episode 12. When we left last time, I didn't have that uh, plane cut the way I want, so I want to show you what the problem is, and we'll go ahead and fix it. Now, I need you to get in real close on this. If you can see, I'll point this out. All right, so here's our blade, obviously, and there's our wedge. Would be a lever cap in any other plane. And it's slanted so that when the shaving comes up, it curls off to the side. But it also has a little bevel on the opposite side so that it doesn't stick over here out beyond this piece and then it would end up uh, touching the side of the groove, or the side ball of the groove. Well, the problem is that the shaving is not, this bevel, this big bevel needs to be moved over farther. The blade is thick enough that as long as the support is anywhere along here, it's fine. So it doesn't need to be as close to the end as it is. So I'm going to take this wedge out, and I'm going to make this bevel. Uh, I'm going to cut back to about here. I've got, I don't want to go up into. Uh, I don't. Want, I don't want the bevel to start up inside, however, because then you've got shavings possibly going up in there, although somewhat unlikely. Anyway, let's just experiment and see what happens. I want to get this thing working so we can get at it. Use the shooting board, and I'm going. I'm going to. So I'm going to avoid cutting this bevel back any further, and I'm just going to cut some off the end. Now we still got that little bit to get rid of. So. That lay in the way we want. Okay, see how that works. As I said, the blade is thick enough, it's 3 16 of an inch thick, that it's well supported. Okay, that's back far enough that it's certainly not going to be in the way at all. So when I do this, I pull the blade back so that I don't see it at all, then knock, knock the wedge in and then start tapping this and I'm going to get you to photograph or, or pick this up on camera one more time so that they know for sure okay now you've got to almost be right in line with this so that you just see that blade projecting will the camera focus on it mm. I'm going to put my finger there I think it's see what like that Almost has to be good. All right, try this out on a scrap and see if we get it to work. As long as it kicks them out and they don't jam in there, that's what I want. I'm just watching to see. Yeah, all right, that should be good. All right, back over here. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Let's see work back. Taking a while to get this one cut. Make sure that's laying flat. Again, I want to make sure, that I, when I make mine, I make very little side-to-side -side room. You can see down here. I don't, uh, I don't make that much wider than the blade is so that there's very little opportunity for the blade to slide side-to-side, -side, which means every time you put it back together, it should come back almost to the exact same spot. And I'll just verify that if I can see somehow. Oh, it seems to be fitting down in there. All right, now I should be able to just, I want to make sure I'm clearing the bench. I should be able to plane until this, I'll show you with the pencil. When this starts to touch the bottom, that's when it'll stop cutting. And then I'm down to depth, and it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Because then uh, all of the grooves will be the exact same depth. And then when you go to put your bottom in, it doesn't end up bottoming out on you before you assemble the joint before you close the joint. All 
hope that bottoms out soon because I don't want to make that much deeper. Oh, it's starting to stop now. Okay, that's that's all right. I can live with that for depth. Okay, so I'm back here. I'm still cutting. I'm not cutting anymore up there. So we'll just keep going until we no longer pick up a shaving. That's almost it. And full pass, make sure. Okay, so we're full depth. Now, I want to point something out to you while I have it. Somebody asked on one of the forms why I didn't cut the groove before I did the dovetails. And I think I explained it, but I wanted to make sure. Do you see how fragile this piece is? Now, it's, that's not too bad. But sometimes, if it's a lot closer, if, it, if you were to cut the groove first, then you come in, and in the process of trying to mark, that little piece will actually bend over under the pressure of the knife, and then you don't have an accurate mark. So I just save it to be done after the dovetails are cut. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Same depth, this makes it easier. And this is for the bottom. That one we just did is going to house the sliding lid. Now, when the shaving's clear, I, I don't have to take lift the plane up and take it out of the groove each time which runs, has me run the risk of marring the wood, and this is also faster. Concentrate on keeping that standing plumb. Isn't this the coolest way to cut a groove? Instead of an old router. You're supposed to say yes. Sure. I'd have to see it the other way. Hang you guys to agree with me. All right, make sure we're working on the inside, not the outside. I don't really want to make a mistake like that. This is the uh, this is the top groove for the sliding lid particular attention to making sure this stays sides perpendicular to the face. Now we've got a little bit of a little bit of uh, material right there so that's not what it should be but it's not that big of a deal. Work with it when we get there. Even though the grain may change direction, it's at the bottom of a groove, not going to be seen. Although actually, that's not entirely true because there will be times when this groove is seen. But if you keep if you keep your blade projection to a minimum, so you're taking a fairly light cut, then you can usually cut against the grain and still get away with a, a decent surface. Finish early? Do we get pizza tonight? That's part of the deal, isn't it? You buy. When I do this, I move my body a fair bit, and I find it's easier to uh, keep this plane standing plumb instead of moving my arms. So I'm rocking a fair bit. Heel toe. If it was really long, I'd have to involve arm movement, but small as this is. So 
So somebody had a question on the form, or maybe in a private email, I can't remember, dovetailing question, and I think the best way to answer it, I'm going to teach Jake, you want to focus on Jake for a second? We're going to embarrass him as much as we can. I'm going to teach Jake, who happens to be 17, how to cut dovetails. We'll do it in a half hour session. Up here for We'll do it in a half hour session. Second. And I think in the process of doing it, watching me teach someone who doesn't know how to cut them, you may be able to slide yourself into his shoes a whole lot easier. And it'll cause me to bring up some points that I might not otherwise think of when I'm sitting here teaching it to you. So I think it may be a very valuable lesson and we'll probably throw it in here sometime in the next two or three. Okay, let's do these little short ones. These are the end pieces. The only one I have to be careful that I don't screw up is the one that I have in my hand right now. i got to make sure I'm cutting on the bottom. I'm glad I've thought of that. So, let's just orient these pieces the way they're going to be put together. Number three is there, so I'm just going to put a note on here. Top. I'll be planning this anyway, so. so the groove is going to be on the bottom. So this is the only one that I could possibly get into trouble with, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right now, and then it'll be finished. I don't have to worry. Don't squeeze too hard. Remember how fragile this wood is. And this is a fairly short piece, so you got to do a little bit of a balancing act because you don't have much in the terms of reference. The groove is in between the two pins, so we're not touching either of the pins, which would show. sides. Hey Jake, that dovetail lesson will be free, huh? You won't have to pay for that. You're the only one on your hockey team that can cut dovetails. Jake, by the way, is the one that does all the taping of all the tools we sell with hockey tape on the handle. All right, last groove. I sometimes wish I had more to do. Check and make sure that these upper grooves, the ones that we see, okay, here's what I was talking about. I'm in here for a close. I want to make sure that that wall is nice and square. Appears to be on both. These ones aren't nearly as critical, but I, if I'm going to do it, I may as well do it right. So there are the four pieces. And these are ready to assemble as soon as we do the bottoms. So I've got to get a measurement. I'm going to make the bottom. I'll fit the lid last after it's assembled. Uh, my steel square. And my notepad. Alright, we're going to go back to the dimension of some lumber here. <laughs> 